Hello, I'm Hans Golf Zero Uniform Papa Lima, and today I'm going to talk about Prog Rock 2, which is the successor to the popular Prog Rock kit by QRP Labs. So here is Prog Rock 2, the boards, and uh, the first thing you'll note is that they are extremely small. They're shown here, pictured next to some old HC6 crystals, and the PCB of the Prog Rock 2 is actually slightly smaller than, a Prog Rock, than an HC6 crystal. The board has components mounted on both sides of the board. There's a microcontroller here, and on the other side of the board we have the SI5351A synthesizer chip and a 25 MHz TCXO reference for that, and a 3.3 volt voltage regulator. The SI5351A is a very nice and popular synthesizer chip and it has three separate outputs which can be configured extremely precisely to any frequency from about 3.5 kHz to over 200 MHz. It can also support operation with two of its outputs in quadrature mode which means a 90 degrees phase shift between them which is very accurately maintained. Now a disadvantage of the SI5351A is that it has no internal storage so it needs to be configured every time at power up. And in the in the Prog Rock 2 kit this is achieved by this uh, STM32 microcontroller that you see here. Um, and there's a micro USB connection here which connects to a host PC terminal emulator so that you can configure the Prog Rock 2 very very easily. So Prog Rock 2 has these rows of pads on either side of the board on the long edges resulting in a total of 24 possible connections to the Prog Rock 2 and uh, some of these are actually used more than once uh, like the ground connection for example. There are several ways to make the connections to Prog Rock 2. Uh, you could either solder the uh, wires directly to the pads here or another way is to use what I've done here with a uh, 2x6 pin header strip and these are available as an option when you purchase the Prog Rock 2 and connected on just one side of the board uh, the pinout has been very carefully chosen so that just one 2x6 pin header is enough to connect all three uh, output clock signals and the supply voltage ground and the three bank select inputs. The bank select inputs allow you to choose any one bank of three frequencies from eight different banks of frequencies that you've configured. Another way to connect it is uh, to use a two two by six right angled pin headers soldered on here and uh, if you do that you've then got connection to all available 24 pins. You could then uh, use that on matrix board as I'm showing here um, or you could have a, a 2x6 pin female connection sockets on your project and just plug in the, the module. Um, similarly the 2x6 pin could then be standing up on, on your project board or uh, plugging into a 2x6 female pin header socket. So those are nice ways to uh, connect Prog Rock 2 if you wish. It's small enough that you can even install a Prog Rock 2 inside an old HC6 crystal case as I've done here. Um, of course you need a minimum of three connections because you need a positive voltage supply, you need an output clock signal, at least one output clock signal, and you need a ground connection. So what I've done is I connected the positive uh, supply to one of the crystal pins and the, and the output clock zero to another crystal pin, and I connected the ground connection to the case. And you can see here I drew a plus on the can of the of the crystal to show which of these uh, pins is the plus connection because obviously once you've soldered up it's quite difficult to imagine which of them is the plus connection after you've done that. Here's a quick demonstration. I've connected the power supply to my Prog Rock 2 which is installed inside this crystal 
and uh, the supply voltage is set to 5.1 volts and you can see that it's using about 32 milliamps according to the meter there and over here on the frequency counter you can see I'm recording very nearly 10 megahertz um, which is you know the difference to 10 megahertz here will be due to the calibration of the frequency counter uh, rather than an inaccuracy on the ProBlock 2 itself. Um, still this is a very old frequency counter and so it's uh, very nice to see it working so well here. So this is the ProBlock set up as a 10 megahertz uh, crystal, uh, a 10 megahertz oscillator source which is the default setting of the ProBlock at power up and if you haven't done anything. So you know I've replaced here an HC crystal with a ProBlock 2 which is uh, set to 10 megahertz, which makes it a just a very expensive 10 megahertz crystal replacement, really. But obviously, you get the point that you can set it to any crystal frequency you like. Now, when you connect a PC terminal emulator to the QDX and you press the return key, uh, this is just using a terminator called Putty, which is a very popular one and the one I usually use. Uh, you can see that you have here these eight different banks of frequencies, each of which has three entries for the three uh, SI51A clock outputs, 0, 1, and 2. And there's a star next to the bank which is currently in use. So on this particular prog rock, I haven't connected the bank 0, 1, or 2 inputs, and therefore uh, it's just at the default bank 0. <coughs> you also see some parameters here which are to do with the GPS calibration of the system frequency of the uh, prog rock 2. Now you can see here that the frequency of the clock zero output is set to 8.2 megahertz and over here on the frequency counter there you will see it's reading just under 8.2 megahertz. Now if I come back over here and I just type zero add another uh, zero, so it's now 82 megahertz. And when I press S to save and activate the configuration, um, now back over here on the frequency counter, you see we've uh, gone up now to 82 megahertz. So uh, this old frequency counter is really doing a great job, and its calibration is very, very close, uh, considering its, its age and that it's just using its internal oscillator. The key, what the keys to control the terminal are, is written down here at the bottom. It is a very minimalist user interface because it has to fit everything within a 21 kilobyte program space, including the SI5351A configuration and this configuration user interface and the USB device stack. Nevertheless, it's pretty functional. Um, there's a hidden key. If you press the G key, it switches on the uh, GPS calibration log here so you can see uh, what's actually going on with the GPS discipline. And the steps of the GPS, GPS discipline are in 3,650ths of a hertz. So it's actually very, very precise, the, the GPS discipline. Um, it will, of, of course, be improved if you could keep it in an enclosure so that any temperature variations are as quick as, as slow as possible to the TCXO. Um, the TCXO on its own is a 0 0.25 ppm device and when you add the GPS discipline it really becomes very accurate. Um, if you press G again you get instead this log where once per second it updates the uh, measurements here for the GPS uh, discipline and there's some more description of that in the manual. If you press G again we'll just go back to normal mode where you can edit the parameters. Now just like the other QRP Labs modern products, the QDX, QRG2 uh, and the U4B products that use the STM32, uh, ProGlock2 also uses STM32 and it has the same firmware update procedure. So I've, if I press F to do firmware update, you'll see that the terminal emulator disappears and instead I open up a file manager window which shows me the current firmware version file. So it's currently on 1.00 uh, there, which you can just about see. Now, the Q, uh, the ProGlock 2 is emulating a USB memory flash drive, USB memory stick, 
And to update the firmware, all I do is download from the QRP Labs webpage the new firmware version I want, which is as a zip and unpack it and store it somewhere on my PC. And then I just have to drag that across onto the uh, Progrock 2. Now here it's saying, do I want to replace it? Because I've just got the same firmware version. So of course, normally I would be using a higher firmware version. Um, then it just copies it and disappears. And once that's done, I can then go and reopen uh, the uh, terminal emulation window as before. So there you have it, Progrock 2, the triple uh, synthesized clock generator um, with persistent storage of the configuration parameters, TCXO reference as standard, and GPS discipline option with lots of different flexible options for how you use it, and it can even be small enough that you can install it in an HC6 crystal case, as you see there. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy this new QRP Labs product.